Sometimes I make really poor decisions like, hey, let's film the intro for this video outside. And hey, let's watch Aladdin Bevanfield. Those are good ideas, right? No. No. We come too far to look back. There is no time to turn back. The thunder roll You know, I rather enjoy the stupidity for most of the dingo pictures at this point, but Bevanfield films? <laughs> These things are a real chore to watch. Bevanfield films is where all joy in the universe goes to die, and their take on Aladdin is pretty much an endurance test. This thing is an hour and 14 minutes, and it barely has enough material within it to cover a 40-minute film. Hell, I bet you could cut this thing down to about 20 minutes, and the only thing lost would be pointless, dry conversation. Because that's the majority of this movie. People very dryly discuss things of very little worth. Hell, something magical will happen before these morons and they'll start discussing how well the grass grows this time of year. We have both Kate O'Mara and Jason Connery returning to voice a couple of wretched characters in this one, with Jason Connery as the Vizier and Kate O'Mara as Madame Roly-Poly. No relation to Roly-Poly BB-8. Well, there might be some. You may notice that both both these characters sort of look like old Monsieur Rodin from their Beauty and the Beast. Apparently disgusting Weasley-like characters was just Bevanfield's jam. No Christopher Lee this time, instead it's Derek Jacobi who's been forced to drain all emotion from his voice to play the Magician, aka Jafart. Bevanfield made their garbage version of Aladdin in 1992, the same year as the Disney one, but I'm sure that had nothing to do with it. Anyway, to start off, we are shown an extended shot of some really doofy animation loops. My favorite of which seems to be featuring a woman trying to strangle a pot. But that's just how life goes in a town in Morocco. Where everyone moves most naturally and is very white. Hey. Hey. Madam Rowley, what a surprise to see you out and about on such a fine day. Hmm, should the voices be audible or drowned out by the music and background chatter? Tough choice. Come. I have something to show you. Wonderful. It's already almost impossible to hear anyone in this scene, and she decides to whisper most of her dialogue. Lead and I shall follow. And of course, Bevanfield's gonna be adding their... awkward pauses and lines to make their characters either sound drunk or... broken. <laughs> what is it that you wish me to see? Have you turned the Sultan into an ant, as you said you would? Have you stolen his jewels? <laughs> Why did that make her angry? Why are they dragging this out instead of Jafart following her into her place like he said he would already? Well, we gotta drag this out to an hour and 14 minutes somehow. Stunning animation! Bevanfield's really showing off here. I just got a whiff of this movie. It stinks. You don't need to gesture at him to follow you. He's right beside you. Move it along! Is this it? Is this what you disturb, my Sunday John? Oh. Yeah, this guy can't be bothered to go get a crappy looking lamp when talking is clearly too much for him. Before I divulge anything further, I must warn you. I require a payment. Continue, continue. <gasps> uh. Yeah, that about sums things up so far. Only an hour ten left. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
<laughs> Was that insect screaming? Wow, her potto vision almost took the entire movie out of commission. <sighs> if only. This boy will help you in your task. You must travel to China. You will recognize him by the color of his eyes. They are as blue as the sky. So Jafar is just supposed to search all of China for a boy with blue eyes? Take this ring. It's green like my rings. Just kidding, it's red like yours. After some more barely audible whispering, Jafart sets off for the one sure place to find a boy with blue eyes in China. A marketplace. So like some versions of Aladdin, this one primarily takes place in China instead of an Arabian or Persian setting. And Bevanfield made Aladdin a very British Chinese man. Bevanfield also keeps some of the very inconsistent things about having this story set in China, like there's still being a sultan rather than an emperor. So it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's like the original tale, so it's good. Oh look, Aladdin and a stupid monkey. Wonder what inspired them to do a scene like this. But this time the monkey is not Aladdin's buddy and sets up this riffraff street rat for the biggest orange theft a marketplace in China has ever seen. Why? Look, he's staring my oranges. I'm so cross about my oranges, I thought about trying to be audible, but it's not worth it. Who knew that inside this DVD case was the animation cave of wonders? They continue to chase and whisper yell at Aladdin until he gets the brilliant idea of hiding in the only pot that's not part of the background. Also, Jafar is randomly now here because he knew that this orange commotion must be caused by the blue-eyed guy in China. <sighs> <sighs> What was that? <gasps> Man, these pots suck. No wonder that woman at the beginning was so angry with them. Look, there he is. This sounds like people having to record in their parents' house to have to keep their voices down. Well, the poorly animated chase is back on, so Latin ducks into the public bass. A point that is apparently so important for us to know that the sign had to briefly turn into English on us. Because, you know, we'd never get where this was had they not translated that for us. <gasps> I thought something exciting might happen for a second. Luckily, I was wrong. Oh, that's Aladdin doing that echoey singing, is it? I totally buy that. Glad he saw Blasman combing her hair for two seconds and is immediately in love. Truly, a love for the ages. So she hilarious repeats her combing of the hair a few more times while Aladdin repeat animation sings his stalker tune. Which, luckily, no one can actually hear due to Bevanfield's crappy audio mixing. Oi, we're in China, we are! <laughs> oh, that's what knockoff Jasmine was laughing about during Aladdin's song. Something from the future. Guess she just exists outside of time. Oh, cool, this crap animation again. I really miss that. Jafart then makes his big entrance and summons the ring genie. Can't touch this. You know what? Maybe this guy is the true origin of the fake Sinbad genie movie Shazam. Anyway, the usual happens here with Jafar pretending to be Aladdin's uncle so that he'll go lamp fetching for him. You don't look like my father. And you don't look very Chinese. Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell are these proportions here? Jafar's head is like the size of Aladdin's torso. And he could crush Aladdin's head with his hand. 
He's already a monster. What does he need the stupid lamp for? Mum, mum, look who I've met. It's Dad's long lost brother, Uncle... Uncle Sumo. Uncle Sumo? Was that just the first thing that popped into his head? Good plan, Jafart. We then learn the shocking truth about Aladdin's mother. She has four eyebrows. Sometimes, anyway. Other times they blink in and out of existence, or she doesn't have any at all. And I know how much a lot of you all loved how inconsistent Bevanfield was with how many fingers people had in their Beauty and the Beast, but I gotta point out how ugly most of the three-fingered hands in this one are. They just look like E.T. hands a lot of the time. You can flip me off with your gross finger all you want, Ring Genie, it's true. I must say, you don't look very much like my dear departed husband. Well, it's hard for anyone to resemble such a fine, detailed face like that. Though Jafart does seem to be turning into a demented knockoff Muppet, so he's getting closer. Spot. I love that he gives a cartoonish overreaction usually reserved for a horny character to a tree. Madam Dim Sum better not leave him alone with it. Uh, may I take a closer look? Ooh. Mmm, the roots are healthy. Or maybe she should just leave him alone with the tree. Uh-oh, Aladdin's mother is plotting something stupid, no doubt. It's a rather ugly tree. Oh, but you fail to see its inner beauty. Okay, I don't care what you do with the stupid tree anymore. Just stop talking about it. Ah, how are we today? I'm turning into a cat. Oh, wow. They left lagless dim sung plainly just floating in on screen. Bevanfield, you are the worst. Is Aladdin around? Well, actually, I sent him off so that we might have more time to talk. Oh boy, and here I was worried that the plot might start to move along. Why don't we both go out into the garden? We can sit and talk in the shade of the fig tree. That tree can hardly offer shade to the dog. Why would we want to sit there when we can have the choice of so many beautiful trees? Why, Aladdin, you have become so rude. They can't just walk to the damn tree. No, they have to discuss it first, going back and forth about nothing. I hate this movie. Camel dung. I should have known that shit was the secret behind everything. Jafart reveals the crevice of blunders, which just really blows Aladdin away. Enter the cave. But there's no light down there. You just revealed a magic cave to me. Who cares? There's no light down there. Besides, it's tea time and I can't be bothered to deal with your rubbish cave. I'm on holiday. Why don't you go down instead? Sinking is hard, it is. Oi, I'm a lad in team song. You don't seem to appreciate the enormity of what I have shown you. I have done so on the strength of the relationship we have built up over the past few hours. He really has weaved himself into Aladdin's life, hasn't he? Do not disappoint me now. With your help, we shall be able to provide for your mother and for your future. But I don't wish to enter. I came back outside into the blizzard, just so that I could feel something again. Here, take this ring. Take this genie summoning object to go get me a genie summoning object. I'm the best villain ever. They will fetch a price on which you will be able to feast. <laughs> After discussing it back and forth for another few years, Aladdin finally goes down into the damn crevice to get the lamp and some jewels. Can you imagine if in the Disney one, when Jafar takes Aladdin to the Cave of Wonders, Aladdin just grinded the plot to a halt by complaining about how he didn't really feel like going in there because it was cold and had to be convinced for minutes to continue the plot? I wish I could say that's what this movie was like, but that would imply excitement started at some point and was halted when here it never starts. 
No one can ever put any emotion into their voice. Uncle, are you sure I should be safe down here? Look, he's still complaining about it. Just get going, you ugly three long fingered handed freak. Hello, I've come for the lamp. Do you know where it is? Can you lead me to where it might be? Now he's dolly asking snakes if they can just take him to the lamp. Really makes the most of its runtime, this movie. Aladdin then rubs his freak hands together, accidentally releasing MC Genie. Stop! Genie time! Hi, I'm Ring Genie Jordan. Oh, my apologies. It's Ring Genie Jordan. Prepare for excitement! Where did you come from? A magically appearing person. I'm ever so slightly befuddled, I am. My shades are too dark for this. Having the ring genie in the story really kind of takes away from the wonder of finding the genie in the lamp, doesn't it? Not that there be any wonder in this one if it didn't have the ring genie, but still, it's redundant. The anachronisms pulled out by the genie in this one just feel so half-assed, too. Like, there's no fanfare or joke timing to them, he just kind of does them once in a while. Oh, look, sneakers! Ooh, a blowtorch! That should blow Aladdin's mind. Unfortunately, he doesn't have one. These are just pulled off so well, it reminds me of Alibaba and the Gold Raiders. Be careful that spider over there. That, you better watch out for that spider. <gasps> and that was close. Whew, I sure was worried. So I take it you're going first. Oh, I was really worried they wouldn't find a way to make this trip over a lava pit boring, but Bevanfield is always up to the task of dullifying any scene. Hmm, Genie Jordan. Jordan. My friends call me Jordan. So you can call me Genie Jordan. Can't you do something to get us across without me having to walk across those stones? I'm in training. It's the Genie Guide to Situations. I'm only on the H's. <laughs> so you're telling me he knows Blowtorch, but he doesn't know Fly yet? That would be before H. Well, we're not going to get very far if we stand around talking. Oh, cool. Can I cut the rest of that from this movie then? Dull complaints, dull complaints, dull complaints, and wow, we've made it to the lamp. What a harrowing journey this has been. I'll never forget that spider he had to look out for. They grab the lamp and some jewels, and we get one of many character changes without the background changing. Bevan Field is just too good. This place gets stranger and stranger. Does it? Does it? <laughs> Aladdin? What am I to do? What am I to say? I've lost her son, and I so wanted that lamp. Oh man, Jafar, that's cool. <laughs> oh man, my trainers are getting wet, and I just bought these last week. <laughs> that's really funny him saying he bought this, cause he didn't. Good jokes. Jordan. How are we going to get out? Was the direction, hey, the cave you are in is filling with water, so can you give us a line read like it's the most boring thing you've ever seen? They float over to a spot where the water has just magically completely disappeared, giving us another good moment of who gives a shit tension. Then we are treated to a new monstrosity. What joy. Ma'am, please remind me not to ever visit this place again. Yes, I don't want to visit this place ever again either. What a pleasure it is to meet you. I wish I could say the same, but my head would probably explode from withholding that much truth. Anyway, after talking for a short eternity and forgetting to change the background again, the eagle says, What a pleasure it is to meet you. Didn't he already say that? Why can't this movie just move a scene along? It's defying you to watch it at this point! That there's Aladdin. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to meet you finally. You know, if The Shining happened to me right now and I just froze, that would be preferable to finishing this movie! 
Several years later, the stupid bird flies its ass out, which magically makes Aladdin and Ring Genie Jordan able to climb out. Come on, Jordan. Oh yeah, we wouldn't want to hold things up in this movie, now would we? I never spent enough time with him explaining his homework, talking to him about life, oh. Aladdin, look at yourself. Is this the state in which you run away? I didn't edit that, by the way. Dim Sung is crying about Aladdin supposedly dying, then without pause, she's complaining at him. It's the one moment in the movie that they move quickly, and it makes no sense. What is this? Oh, it's a jewel. Maybe we can be rich enough to change the background around here. Mom, this is a ring genie, it is. Boring! After several cleaning up discussions, Aladdin goes and rubs one out. But instead of getting any pleasure from it, instead all that pops out is the stupid lamp genie, Mr. Schitzel Pitlick. I am the genie of the lamp. Wow, a genie! That's really exciting! Right, ring genie? Your desires are mine to provide, your wishes mine to grant. Ugh. Yep, that's pretty much what I was doing when watching this dull turd. I do wish people wouldn't call unless they want something. <laughs> Dude, even I don't think this is funny. Anyway, they talk about nothing and make mild complaints about things for a while. Notice a pattern with this movie yet? Oh, look at the state of the lamp. I don't know. They certainly don't make lamps where they used to. I was kind of hoping you'd be earlier. I've been trying to organize my retirement now for quite a while. I'll organize your retirement for you! What do you think? He says he'll do anything I bid him. Aladdin? Talking about Jordan? No, the lamp genie there. She can't hear me or see me. It is only you who has called upon me who has the gift to command, see, and hear me. Oh, that includes your ring genie friend, of course. What a plot twist! Only Aladdin and his other genie can see the precious lamp genie. This is really gonna affect nothing. So, why can other people see ring genies and not lamp genies? Actually, never mind! You'd probably spend half an hour talking in circles trying to answer that. You're thinking about that princess, aren't you? Thinking about rubbing another one out, aren't you? No, I'm not. I said you're lovesick for the princess. I said you're lovesick for the princess. Did they just play two takes of his line? Did they just play two takes of his line? We could dress you in trendy clothes and a sharp hairdo. Old powers make Aladdin a dapper duty. I know. I lost the lamp genie for his help. You can teach me karate instead. Oh, so lamp genies are good at helping you woo princesses and ring genies are good at karate lessons. I guess I was wrong about being redundant to have two genies around. A week later, Aladdin is totally prince a -ing it up and can now afford his stupid piles of oranges. The dream has come true. Over at the Sultan of China's pad, we meet the Bland Vizier, who I especially hate because he blabs on forever about nothing. And I know that sounds like absolutely everyone in this movie at this point, but he's especially bad for it. I rejoice that for the wedding of my son and the beautiful princess, the gardens will be in their full glory. Oh. Yes, and it should be a good year for the roses, they say. <laughs> <laughs> good year for the roses! <laughs> oh boy, this movie, I tell ya! Ah, Junior, I didn't see you over there. Come tell us how your training with the great wise men is progressing. Will, Daddy. Uh, Dad, son. It's Dad, remember? We agreed you'd start calling me Dad. Uh, stay out of Riverdale. The Vizier guy gets cat eyes a bunch of times during this scene, which just kind of makes me think of him as a human meowth. I mean, if he got run over by the Mew truck a few dozen times beforehand. 
Yeah, thanks for the sum up of the movie so far. Um, so Sultan, how do you wish to conduct today's public consultation? Or perhaps you'd like to come down with the wise men and see how they're getting along? Oh, Vizier, you know how these events bore me so. But the public expects you to attend the chambers. Oh, now they're talking about chamber meetings. This movie has got it all. You know that I'd be much better than my father at this job. Now, Princess Lily, you know that's not true. No one could do a better job of not dying from boredom of having to listen to the bland vizier talk in circles about nothing for hours. Oh, Phyllis, you know that's not true. Madame Dimsum had a gift. The gift I bring. Yeah! <laughs> Anyway, Aladdin's mom, who barely resembles herself anymore, is here to beg that Aladdin be able to bone the princess because he looked at her once and has money and a couple of genies. Which does seem to be a pretty good deal to the Sultan of China, but throughout the scene I just keep looking at that goofy beard man in the back. I mean, just look at him. <laughs> Then Princess Lily eats her assistant or something. Also, Dim Sung brought that stupid eagle, which is apparently enough for salt and shit for brains to go back on his deal to marry his daughter off to Sir Moose Vizier Jr. Sire, may I quickly have a word with you? Quickly? <laughs> quickly? <laughs> Uh, first good joke this movie's told. C quickly. Uh. This quick word takes about four minutes of circle talking to come to the conclusion that Aladdin needs to perform a magic trick to secure Lilypad's marriage. And naturally, Mr. Schitzel Pitlick is going to have to do a lot of science to figure out this magic trick for Aladdin. How about if I had some hydrochloric acid? <laughs> that sure was worth it. Why is a magic genie doing science? He was an average genie, but he was a brilliant scientist. Science genie eventually figures out how to blow a rainbow out his ass, which is exactly the same rainbow effect that shot out of the beast's fountain for some reason in Beauty and the Beast. It is better here, though, because Silly Beard Man is watching, and if Aladdin Dim Sum can impress him, he's good enough to marry Lilypad. I can't wait to see if those two actually like each other other considering they have not shared one single line of dialogue yet. Jafart has reappeared now and tries to get the lamp back and hilarity ensues. Oh, did I say hilarity? I meant a grim reminder of our mortality and how this movie has robbed you of precious time you could have spent living. Anyway, they're married now, I guess. Still haven't talked to each other, but why would the movie waste time on stuff like that when there's more important conversations like Jafar Part 1 and Jafar Part 2 blandly plotting together? We both, it seems, have a problem in the folk. With a boy. That's a, f a perfect take. Use that one. Hey, if we're gonna have redundant genies, might as well have redundant villains too. I don't know why Disney chose to merge these things. What, they draw the lamp with a ruler there? It's nice of Bevanfield to give some first graders a chance to work on this. I do hope Aladdin is safe. I do hope I get to know who he actually is soon, too. Anyway, the Jafart brothers' big plan was for Jafart 1 to juggle some lamps, then Jafart 2 and his son just to grab the lamp, which is sitting out in the open because Aladdin is an idiot. Oh, Master, what is it that you wish? I want you to transport Princess Lily and this palace to my beloved home. Red Mountain. So you think maybe there'd be a slight hesitation, but the genie would have to grant the wish. However, this is Aladdin Bevanfield. So they spend two minutes discussing the wish and how Schitzel Pitlick thinks it's a bad spot to move the palace before he actually does it. 
Meanwhile, karate lessons with Giant Jordan Head. He's a great teacher. Look at him sitting there. A few hours later, Aladdin realizes that his palace has disappeared. This is the evil doing of Erasmus. I must confess, it was I who mistakenly told him about the lamp and where to find it. Accidentally, you purposely called him over to whisper at him about it. Also, why and how are you here? You just take a quick jaunt over from Morocco to see what's up? Magic timing old bat then gives Aladdin a picture of a triangle on a mountain, which obviously tells Aladdin exactly where they are. And he's off to go save Lilia! Just kidding, China Sultan and Bland Vizier Circle Jerker are here to talk about nothing for two and a half minutes before he can go. Jordan, you know I've been thinking a lot recently. <laughs> <laughs> thinking a lot. That's a good one, Aladdin. This is the first time in the past few months that I've had to think about not using magic to sort things out. What, is this some sort of BS moral choice for Aladdin? He doesn't want to use magic anymore? Magic was good enough to help him get rich, his wife, and his palace, but now using it would be overkill. I swear this boy has led us on a wild goose chase. I almost forgot the word g- Oos in the middle of it. Do we really need Blam Vizier following Aladdin? Can't he just die already? Ah, uh, I'm die. Ing. Well, Dad, you're dead. I'll miss how boring you were. Oh, and apparently Jafar is dumber than we thought, as he has literally placed the palace he stole on top of a mountain where it's not structurally sound and is cracking and falling apart. But that's okay, because he's making a soup that acts like a meal, and he's really happy about it. Oh wait, no, he's scared of it. Okay, back to happy. I knew it! I just knew it! These kind of people just won't believe you alone. I'm overjoyed Aladdin is coming, I guess. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Let me try some magic. I think we might be better off if we think of an alternative for a while. Let me give it a try. I command you now to make us free. Let me try it again. No, please, Jordan. We should think of an alternative. This movie is almost over, and it still feels like this will never end! So the alternative to magic is the magic talking eagle, who grows in size quite a damn bit to fit both Aladdin and Jordan on him. We come too far to look back, there is no time to turn back. Wow, it's like an 80s rock ballad if one got eaten and shipped back out several dozen times. You have only one hour in which to enter the castle and return with the princess. The castle is quickly disintegrating. Could stupid Jafart not wish for his castle stupidity to not fall apart, or would that have been beyond the magic science of Schitzel Pitlick? You are on your own now, my friend. Go so that you do not waste time. If you don't want time to be wasted, boy, are you in the wrong movie. You know, I think I should have stayed out there with Brutus. No, you don't. Your magic may serve as well. Oh, now it's okay to use magic, is it, Aladdin? Well, he's gonna get what's coming to him because that Aladdin is gonna have a bad time. And no, I don't know why Jafart suddenly has skeleton minions. That wasn't important to show us like a shit ton of boring dry talk. Aladdin, welcome to my humble abode. I think he's quite familiar with it. All you did was put his palace on top of a mountain. What is his end goal here anyway? Sit in his falling apart castle with some skeletons and Lily chained up until they all die? Well... Double die for the skeletons, I guess. I thought we'd seen absolutely everything up until now. I thought I knew what emotion was up until now. Aw, now I just feel bad for the skeletons. There's no time to waste. I wish you had that attitude an hour ago! Lily? Oh, Aladdin! I thought he'd killed you! Woo! An hour and 
nine minutes in and Aladdin and Lily have finally talked to each other. And I'm quite certain that Lily was hoping that he had killed him. Jordan, get this chain off Lily. And for once, make sure you get it right. Sure, boss. Oops, probably should have thought of an alternative. Why, well, you should be dead. I was hoping this palace would have fallen apart and I'd be dead too. I just want us all dead. Hmm, me too. The lamp, he keeps it in the cupboard. Why does no one keep this lamp on their person? Jafart should especially know to do this considering that's how he easily stole it from Aladdin. Wow, you did the most obvious thing. Good job, Aladdin. About time. I'd say end this misery. For bringing back Princess Lily safe and unharmed, I sentence you to death. Would anyone like to have their fortunes read? This movie, it's just too funny. Such wondrous comedic timing. Every time it slowed down to the point that I think I'm dead, they hit me with a joke and I realize it's true. I am dead. One last real zinger before watching paint dry the movie ends. The lamp genie has retired and Jafar has to service him inside the lamp. <laughs> The only use and way I could ever see a kid watching this movie is as a punishment. Hey, you've been really bad today, so you have to watch Aladdin Bevanfield. This movie's just so slow and painful, and the fact that Bevanfield movies get some names in their voice casts and make them deliver everything like it's a world where emotion is yet to be discovered, it's just sad. The most, uh, interesting thing this movie does is to show the Aladdin story primarily taking place in China, but it's not worth putting yourself through a movie that feels like it takes about four times as long as it actually is just for that. Now, I have Bland Vizier Rodin here, or whoever he is to answer a few questions about the production of Bevan Fields Aladdin. Now, Bland Vizier, I've got a shotgun. If you thought I was gonna give that guy a chance to talk again, you're as brain dead as Bevan Field Aladdin. I hate you, Aladdin Bevanfield. Just end!